A few weeks ago, before the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 7 had been formally, officially announced, I made a video talking about why I thought Samsung was not using silicon carbon batteries in their devices to make the battery capacity competitive with some of these Chinese OEMs. Now, one of the biggest things that I keyed in on in that video was long-term durability. I talked about how silicon carbon batteries are not as durable as standard lithium ion batteries. What we're gonna do here is dig in a little bit deeper on that because some new information has come out that I think is right in line with what I was describing to you guys about three weeks ago. So what we have here is the European Product Registry for Energy Labeling. And this is a database that is searchable. And what you can do in this database is pick a device. We're just going to pick this one here, this from Wikitel, I think is how that's pronounced. And if you click on it, you see all this information about it. And then you also will see this graphic that will show you the number of full charge cycles this battery has been rated for before the phone's overall battery capacity drops to 80% of its original capacity. I'm sure you've seen Apple iPhone users on your feed posting screenshots of their battery health, 99%, 98%. Once it hits 80%, this is considered to be sort of the threshold. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a handful of devices and kind of get a general idea of what is normal. What is a normal rate of degradation when it comes to a phone battery? So this model right here, if you Google it, A3293, that is going to be an iPhone 16 Pro. And if you scroll down, you're going to see that it is rated for 1,000 charge cycles before the battery hits that 80% mark. This GZC4K is the uh, Google Pixel 9 Pro XL, and just like the iPhone, it is rated for 1,000 cycles. Now look, 1,000 cycles is pretty good. There are 365 days in a year, so if you just do some really rough math, you could say that in three years, it's going to be at 80% of its original capacity. That's really not too bad. Three times 300 is 900 and some change. You're going to be pretty close to 1,000. Here's Samsung. Here's the S25 Ultra. What might they be rated at? They're rated at 2,000. They have doubled what Apple and Google are apparently rated to be able to do. So that's closer to six years. If you do the math, it's closer to like 5.4 years, but still, this is a phone that's being promised seven years of updates and five and a half years on, you still have 80% of your original battery. That is pretty darn impressive. But you know what's even more impressive? Accomplishing that on the Z Fold 7. And that is the model number right here for the Fold 7, and they have done exactly that. They are rated for 2,000 charge cycles. Now, right here, I think there are already quite a few questions that I think are worth asking. So first off, does it really matter that the Fold 7 could last 5.4 years before the battery hits 80% capacity? What percentage of Fold users are keeping their phones that long? What percentage of Fold users have not had any kind of a hardware issue in 5.4 years. It does seem like it's a bit more common in folding phones. So I think all of that is very fair. Now you could also ask just how accurate this is, but it's coming from the European Commission. And I feel like if this was just completely made up, they could probably get in trouble for that. So I'm going to assume that there have been tests done that verify this. But of course, another question you can ask is, well, if silicon carbon batteries apparently are less durable, they degrade faster, can you see that? Can you show that happening in this database? Well, kind of, because there aren't that many phones in the database that have silicon carbon batteries. But the OnePlus 13 has a 6,000 milliamp hour battery that is apparently using silicon in it. And if you look at it, it is rated for 1,000 charge cycles. So you might say, well, Shane, that clearly isn't any more, uh, or I should say less durable than the lithium ion batteries that Google and Apple are using. It's right there with them. But what's interesting is when you look at the OnePlus 13R, this device is rated for 1200 cycles. And the reason it's interesting is because it reverted to lithium ion batteries and they got 200 more charge cycles out of it. 
So I think this is basically the point of this video. It's not necessarily that silicon carbon batteries are terrible and that they're going to degrade so fast that you're all going to regret having bought phones that use them. The point is that Samsung seems to have a much more rigorous standard when it comes to the durability of their batteries than other OEMs. They are shooting for 2000 and everyone else is shooting for something around 1000. And I think do we all know why that would be? You were but a simple Google search away. How much money did Samsung lose from the Note 7? The estimated number is $17 billion. You all remember this. The phone had some sort of fatal flaw in it. The battery would overheat and the phone would basically catch fire and it cost them $17 billion dollars. And after this, they instituted a whole bunch of different standards. What do they call it? The eight point battery check system. This is a blog post from 2017 where they've got this safety check system. And that's the point. They just have a more rigorous standard. And this is not a controversial point. A battery that has silicon in it can hold more energy, but when the battery takes that energy, the silicon expands like 300% and then it contracts and it expands and it contracts. And you know as well as I do that when something expands and contracts a whole bunch of times, there's going to be physical damage over time and that is going to cause that battery to degrade quicker. So from Samsung's perspective, they do not see the reward being worth the risk of going against their battery standards. And again, we all know why. Now, I want to be very clear about this. I am not saying what Samsung should be doing. I'm not telling you that you're wrong for wanting a silicon carbon battery in the Fold 7 or wanting a higher capacity, wanting faster charging speeds. I'm not saying any of that. All I'm doing is, like in that prior video, I'm telling you why, I am fairly confident why, Samsung is doing what they are doing. They are not going to do anything weird or crazy or aggressive when it comes to batteries ever again. They are going to be sure that they're sure every single time because of the Note 7. And when you look at what their standards are, when you look at their charge cycles before dropping to 80%, you can see that. You can see their standards right there in front of you. So guys, let me know what you think about all this in the comments down below. I do have this video basically in a written form over on ShaneCraig.tech. You can get a link there to this database, to several different devices, to their safety check, and all sorts of other things. So if you want to see that, it's in the description. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button before you go so you don't miss out on more content like this. And until next time, Stay nerdy, my friends.